Hello everyone, it is Toby here. We are back with Will and Will got a deadlift bar for his birthday. So I've been trying to keep this one under wraps for about two months now that Will was going to get a deadlift bar for his birthday. So pretty good birthday present, huh? Very good. Well, remains to be seen. Yeah, remains to be seen, but we're going to give it a go today. Uh, usually I've done all my work for deadlifts up until this point on a stiff bar. I think you've pulled on a deadlift bar what once? Um, yeah. I, the first time I ever hit 220 was on a deadlift bar in a powerlifting gym. But apart from that... Yeah. So I, I've literally... I think I've used one maybe once ages ago. But no, never really trained on a deadlift bar properly. So today we're going to answer the question that is in the title. Is a deadlift bar or a stiff bar better? Basically, is a deadlift bar worth getting for a home gym if it's not a birthday present? Is, is it something you'd pick up yourself? Or is a stiff bar more than enough for deadlifts? I.e. is it... A big enough difference that you'd actually worth picking one up. So the session plan for today, as it has been in the last few deadlift sessions, we're going to work up to a heavy triple. Both of us are going to go for the same weight because the program says one to three reps. So we can do both a triple, yeah. hopefully. Uh, and then we're going to back off to paused deadlifts. So pause a couple of inches off the floor. A couple sets of three to six on those. Then heavy pen lay rows lap pull downs, single arm rows, seated cable rows, and then some grip to finish off. So as usual for a strongman deadlift session, heavy deadlifts followed by a hell of a lot of rows. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get warmed up on the deadlift bar. Just before we go for our top set, we'll sort of talk about how the warm ups felt in comparison, whether we've started to feel that whip, that pull that a deadlift bar gives. Uh, and then we'll move into the top set, see how it feels, and then we'll crack on with the accessories. Got to have the first pull. On his new bar. It's gonna feel weird. I don't think it is. Any difference whatsoever? Can't really tell yet because it's so light, but still very <laughs> nice. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I'm gonna get my warm ups in as well and then we're gonna up the weight. I think there genuinely is a difference, like, yeah, you feel the slack come before you get the weight off the floor. And it's not bouncing as much. Yeah, no, it, do, it does feel different to a stiff bar, even with just 120 on it. Um, so exactly. I can feel it that I'm pulling it for longer before it comes off the floor. Yeah. I, I think it will become more obvious when we get more heavy weight on, but it feels nice. You can already see the whip on it. You actually can, like, it's already moving when you get to the top. I very much like. Good, right, I'll give it a pull. You see what I mean? It's nice, it's very nice. It's the same way as last time I used the deadlift bar. Yeah, final warm up thoughts, Will? Um, we'll see after. Get it done. Strange. Strange how? I don't think I pulled the slack out properly. I don't think you did either. <laughs> <laughs> You're good though. Yeah. I don't know if 
I did. I think I focused too much on pulling the slack <laughs> and not enough on pulling it. Yeah. So I don't know if you can really see that, but even with just 220 on it, there's like a noticeable bend in the bar, which shows just how whippy it is. We'll give that, give that end a wobble. <laughs> like just barely touch it. Like the whole thing's just like wobbling now. It's proper whippy, but it's, it's good, it's weird. Uh, I'll flip the camera and we'll go into what felt weird about that last warm-up. So I think for both of us, it's actually just getting used to the bar. Like, Definitely. the last warm-ups moved easy, don't get me wrong, but they felt a bit off for both of us. And that is just because with a stiff bar, you know that when you pull it, it's going to come off the ground. You know what I mean? Like, with this, you pull it and the whole thing flexes. Like, you can properly feel the flex, even though it doesn't look like much on camera. And then it comes off the ground, so it can kind of throw you off a bit. Like for Will, it sort of threw him off in front of him and he ended up stiff-legging it a bit. For me, it just threw me off and it just didn't go as fast as it usually would. So I think there's a bit of learning curve with this bar, but there's definitely a noticeable difference between this and a stiff bar, which, yeah. to, be, to be completely transparent, I wasn't expecting. Like, I was <laughs> I was just like, a bar's a bar, in it? Like, yeah. the only one that feels different is an axle. But I can genuinely feel a noticeable difference here. I'm not sure for the better or for the worse. I think if you learn to use the bar, you can definitely get a higher max out of it yeah. uh, because of the bend. But uh, for reps and stuff, I'm not too sure. But uh, okay, yeah, top set's up next. So I'm going to put the music on now. I'm going to focus. going to get some good reps in. So, Will's first heavy set on there. Yep, uh, it was okay. It was okay. First rep was really good, um, but not used to it wobbling so much at the top. But when I went back down, I was too far in front. Yeah. So It's classic with a, with a more wicky bar. You see it a lot with the pro strongman on the elephant bar. That whip really tries to pull you forward. So if you haven't got yeah. control over it, it just uh, throws you way forward, which on a brand new bar, on a brand new session, you're not going to have it nailed first time round, so can't really blame you for that. I've got to do it now, yeah. I've got to make it look bloody good, so... Yeah, I was in the rep range. In the rep range is fine, yeah, absolutely, especially on a new bar, so let's see if I can control that whip, uh, make it look good, we will see. So the way I just described that to Will is that it felt harder to get started, like it felt harder to get off the ground, but then once it was off the ground, it absolutely flew and flew to lock out way easier. So I think with a bit of getting used to, that'll be a really big asset, I think. Yeah, definitely. Because um, I think I controlled the whip quite well on the way down. It didn't throw me out in front of me quite as much, uh, but that initial pull off the floor where you've got to pull the slack and then the bar comes up, is just a little bit weird to get used to, so it feels slightly harder to get off the floor, but that is exactly what we're gonna be working next on the paused deadlift. So I'm gonna drop the weight down to 190 uh, and do three to six reps paused just as we break it off the floor. That is both of our weak points. So we're just gonna smash through it, get some good reps in there, and I'm gonna show them to you right now.
arms. They are such an exercise, which I've said, I think I said in the last video, where they look like they move super dumb easy, but they feel absolutely horrendous like in their hamstrings and glutes. Yeah, they're proper nasty. But uh, now that we've used the deadlift bar for both a heavy set and two back off variations, do we think it's worth buying one for a home gym or should we stick to a step bar? Uh, you can definitely get away with a stiff bar oh, every day of the week, yeah. but it is really good to have. And if you have a stiff bar already, looking for an upgrade, I'd definitely say it's worth it. Yeah. So my take on it is, if you've got home gym, which is literally just a rack, plates, nothing else, stay on a stiff bar for as long as you can. Also, if you don't have any competitions, don't have any big pools planned, you're just trying to get stronger stick on a stiff bar, use basically the hardest equipment you can until you need to. If you've got a deadlift bar coming up in competition, however, and you at least should go to a gym that has one and try it out. If not, if you have the money, get one yourself because they are different enough to a regular bar that they could, as we've seen with Will, throw you off quite easily. Yeah. And if that's something you want to avoid in competition, then definitely get yourself on one beforehand. Uh, but... A stiff bar should suffice for all of your training otherwise. Uh, but if you're in a position where you've got a pretty well-equipped home gym and you're looking for an upgrade to take your deadlifting to the next level, I'd pick one up. This one's not too expensive. It was, I think, about 300 quid. So um, for a deadlift bar, for any barbell, that's pretty cheap uh, and it's very good quality. So uh, I'd recommend them. But yeah, what we're going to do now, we're going to strip the weight back even further and do some pendle rows. So these are nice heavy rows where you return it to the floor every single rep which are bang on perfect for stuff like a sandbag pickup a stone pickup keg pickup any sort of strongman pickup and uh, someone commented on the last video actually of a way to do these to have even better carryover is to use a bar that has a neutral grip so uh, i think i called a swiss bar or a football bar uh, doing penalty rows with that perfectly mimics the strongman side effect obviously we don't have one of those bars so we're going to stick on the straight bar, but I wanted to throw that tip in there for you because I thought it was really cool and really useful. But uh, yeah, should we start penalty rowing, Will? I guess so. <laughs> Let's do it. They were tough this week for both me and Will. Uh, I dropped it by 10 kilo from last week, which you may have noticed, and that's because Loz told me uh, to drop it a bit and do it a little bit stricter, so that's what I did on the first set. And then the second set, well, I was doing that, and then I just got um, a bit lightheaded after the sixth rep, so called it there, didn't do anything silly. It's five to eight reps, so if I'm not feeling it after six, that's absolutely fine. Uh, Will, 160 was a bit much. A bit too heavy. And then even 140, I'd say, is probably a little bit heavy for Will, so... Uh, I'd suggest next yeah. week doing 130, 120, uh, making sure you touch every rep. Should be heavy rows, but it shouldn't be so heavy that you can't row it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, no, but all good. Um, just shows that even though you're nearly as good as a deadlifter as me, <laughs> rowing is where I really strive and do well. Yeah. So, what we're going to do now is all of the cable back accessories. So, that is the single arm cable row, the lap pull down, and the seated cable row as well. 
We're going to film one set of each of those, uh, put them in a little montage, show them to you guys, and then to finish off the session, we're going to do some behind the back holds just to finish some grip off. So, all good? All good. Let's smash it. <laughs> backs are completely and utterly fried now wouldn't you say oh yeah yeah so uh <laughs> yeah no pretty good all round just some pretty solid voluminous back sets there my calves started cramping massive <laughs> on the lap pull downs uh me and will both went to a festival at the weekend yeah um which wasn't entirely the best recovery <laughs> was it no no uh, lots of walking lots and lots of walking um, didn't drink or anything really for me, so um, yeah. I didn't have that sort of recovery or anything. Just a lot of walking and a lot of food. So it's been a bit of a struggle this week as far as endurance goes. The strength, Slow sessions. yeah, the strength's <laughs> been there. It's just the endurance and the energy has been a bit lower as we recover this week. So we'll be back in full swing next week. But uh, now that is the end of the back session. It's been a good one. It's been a really solid one. Uh, now we just got to do a little bit of grip at the end. I say a little bit, it is three sets of 10 seconds really heavy on the behind the back holds. <laughs> so uh, last time I tried this, I went for 220 and flopped it. I was just completely CNS fatigued, wasn't I? So yeah, I'm going to go for 210 this week, uh, keep it very slightly lighter, go for some solid sets of 10 seconds. What did you, you got 180 last time, didn't you? Yeah, just about. <laughs> so you're going to try that again or yeah, 185? Just do it for more than one set, I think. Yeah, cool. So that'll be the plan for today. Uh, probably only film one set each of those because behind the back holds are probably one of the most boring things to watch in existence, aren't yeah. they? <laughs> so we're going to smash uh, three sets of those out, one set filmed, uh, and we'll show you them right now. <laughs> So did a uh, 12 hour shift yesterday yeah probably wasn't the smartest idea before a deadlift day but no so his, his cns was just fried and as i've said many times yeah. poor grip is the first thing to go but for me 210 felt solid as a rock so 
Really pleased with how that felt. Really, really good. Uh, in two weeks' time, we go for a PB on 30 seconds. So I think I'll go for 205 and hopefully nail that in two weeks. I got it for 15 seconds two weeks ago. So yeah. that should be pretty nice. So yeah, 30 seconds on that is the goal. But grip is feeling solid as ever. Really making some good progress there. So I'm very pleased. Will, happy with the session? Yeah, a bit tired and a bit <sighs> weaker than usual. But yeah, everything still felt good and it was good to try out the new bar. You have those sort of sessions every so often. You just got to power through, which we did. Yeah. But yeah, the new bar is fantastic. And obviously the question of this video was, is it worth getting a deadlift bar over a straight bar, a stiff bar rather? And if you've got a stiff bar, I wouldn't bother unless you've got it coming up in competition is my personal standpoint. I think that's yeah, pretty think fair. So, yeah. if you, it's like, like, yeah. I mean, like us, it was sort of the next logical thing to buy for our home gym. Yeah, it was the next like cheap-ish thing to get. Obviously, want something like a leg press, but they're <laughs> thousands rather than a couple hundred quid. So yeah. that was the next logical step. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Please be sure to hit like on this video and subscribe. We are super close now to the goal of a thousand subscribers. Follow Will over on TikTok and Instagram at Big Lifers for some really high quality reels with his new camera. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.